Okay, if you owned this album <laughs> ever, apologize. Anyway, hi, I'm Michael. I'm Molly. And today we're going to chat about all of the music from 1992 that we know about that we haven't already talked about. As we're going through all this, keep, uh, keep a little mental note of things that you think might be some of the best selling things of the year, some of the highest rating things of the year, because we've got a little quiz at the end that we're going to see if Molly can figure out what all of those things were. And I said, hey, yeah. <gasps> That's what that is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I know that. So I actually listened through this album to see like, oh, that song is actually like really fun. I'm going to listen through to see if I want to listen to the rest of this. It's all very like jammy. It's very like college radio to me. Um, but no, that song was an outlier. It doesn't sound anything like the rest of the album. This way we get a chance to talk about Eva. Ah, yes. We can, okay. talk, <laughs> we can talk about Dancing Queen. We can talk about Take a Chance on Me, Mamma Mia, Lay All Your Love on Me, which I, which is so goofy. I love it <laughs> with its like Bach chorale I feel. I love Take a Chance, Take a Chance. Yeah. Chance, um, chance, Super Trooper, chance. Money, Money, Money. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> gimme, gimme is so great. Uh, Fernando and Waterloo. I saw a tweet that said this, and it was like, a oh, tweet about songs where you have to explain the reference in the song. <laughs> I think it's funny to think of ABBA, especially this Greatest Hits album coming out right before, in 1993, Ace of Bass coming into the scene. Yeah, so, and I have talked to you about how I think you can draw a direct line from, like, ABBA to Ace of Base to the Max Martin hits of the late 90s and early 2000s. Which has Rooster on it. But I feel like Alice in Chains is one of those bands that was in the grunge invasion of rock radio. And I just feel like they were just kind of there, but I was never, I would never have called myself an Alice in Chains fan. Yeah. But like all the radio songs, I knew all the words too, because you just, they were just on all the time. Yeah. Which includes Why and Walking on Broken Glass. I actually looked at this album too to see if I wanted to review the whole thing. And I'm like, no, this is a just the hits album. I've told you about how I used to work in a Chico's clothing store and that song was like on the Muzak in the store and so I would hear it about like seven or eight times a day. I hate that song. <laughs> I really hate that song and I don't and I know we're supposed to be talking about I love this blank. <laughs> I love when that song ends. I remember walking on broken glass my cousins and I always talking about how it reminded us of someone playing golf because of the way that the plinky piano kind of sounds like a golf club hitting a golf ball. <laughs> which includes Achy Breaky Heart. One interesting thing that I learned about Achy Breaky Heart, it's a cover. Yes. And the original came out just like four months before. I listened to a really interesting thing about Achy Breaky Heart, which basically explained, it talked about the guy who wrote Achy Breaky Heart. He was basically, he was like writing country songs and like sending them off to like Nashville studios to see if he could sell them. That one little band recorded Achy Breaky Heart and then I guess somehow got into Billy Ray Cyrus's producers probably yeah. lap, right? Yeah. And he recorded it and it became the hit song of ever and like so this guy is like this songwriter who's like a nobody whose name nobody knows i can't even remember it from the story that i had heard about it he's like a gazillionaire yeah we have to talk about like how intensely this song took over the world mm -hmm. i think if it were not for this song and some of the garth brooks hit huge hits i might have come to like country music yeah. earlier. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And I also think this song definitely embodies like the worst of popular country music. Yeah. But on the other hand, it did ignite an entire line dancing craze that <laughs> swept the nation. Yeah. Which includes No Rain. I love that song, but I think I'm sick of it. I actually really love the song. I could see getting sick of it, but I think I have not ever gotten sick of it because I don't really hear it that much. My parents had the album. Also, if we're talking about Blind Melon, we can talk about the music video for yeah, No Rain. the bee girl. The little bee girl. And it's so sweet at the end when she finds her bee people. Yeah. <laughs> I, it is, it's a fun video. It's like, it, I, it is, for a one-hit wonder, it is an iconic music video. I would put it in like the top music videos. Yeah. Which includes, finally. finally. At one point, I was trying to remember the lyrics to this song. Because it's that song that like you hear and you know the melody, yeah. but you don't know the words. Because it's just like, it's it's on in the club or whatever. Not yeah. that I was ever a club goer. Because I know that uh, finally it's happened to me 
right in front of my face and then like da 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 I can't I remember just cannot hide it. But I couldn't I couldn't think of that. So in my head once I was thinking finally it's happened to me right in front of my face and my salad. <laughs> <laughs> if you get that reference, comment. Uh, so, Don't have to say what it is, just comment that you got the reference and no yeah. cheating. <laughs> but now in my head that's permanently what the lyrics are to that song and I can't get away from it. Which includes If You Ask Me To and her version of Beauty and the Beast with Peebo Bryson. Oh, Ramin's favorite. <laughs> and, and Where Does My Heart Beat Now. Where does my heart beat if you ask me to? That's another one that was played, at least in Ohio, on the mom rock stations you know, all the time. It's interesting to me that, like, Celine Dion, I remember her, like, blowing up in 1996. <laughs> with the Falling Into You album. I didn't know who she was, and then I, I like looked back and I was like, oh, I know all these songs. Yes. And I didn't know that was her. Yeah. Which includes Friday I'm In Love, which is a song that feels like it was like 82, not 92. I did not know that song was that late. That it sort of explains why it was on rock radio throughout yeah. the entire 1990s. Who knew they still had hits that late? Well, I, I think part of it for The Cure is, as far as I know, they only ever had one per album. Is Friday I'm In Love the happiest Cure song? It has My Love and Never Gonna Get It and Free Your Mind on it. This is another band that I was expecting to go into their albums thinking that all of the songs that I hadn't heard before would still be great. They're actually not. But I remember when we were talking about their debut album briefly, I listened through thinking that I would love it. And mm. it seemed like they didn't have enough time in the studio to get everything mm. tuned perfectly. Oh, interesting. They weren't meshing super well. I think the thing with and Vogue is that it seems to me like the album wasn't giving them as much time and money as they should have gotten for as immensely talented as they were. And so when they have these incredible standout songs, it's because they got a good song and they are amazing performers. Free Your Mind is such a fucking good song. Yeah. <laughs> when you first hear Free Your Mind, like you're just like, oh, dance floor, like, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Now, dance floor stat. Like, it's time. It's like yeah. it's like a call to everybody <laughs> who's not on the dance floor to say, get on the dance floor right now. Free your mind! And it's like, oh, time to go. <laughs> I also really love my loving with, uh, and yeah, now it's get. time for the break. Yes! Now we're gonna get it, now we're gonna get it. <laughs> which includes Tears in Heaven and the lamest version of Layla. He's in this class of rock gods from like late 60s and early 70s who just became the worst of boomer like stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and some of the stuff that he did, I actually really like. Like I, Derek and the Dominoes, Layla, fantastic. I didn't know until just a couple of years ago that it was actually Eric Clapton who played the guitar solo on While My Guitar Gently Weeps by the Beatles. I did not know that yeah. either. It's, it's, it's not George. You know, it sounds like Eric Clapton, yeah. actually, now that you mention it. Yeah. Tears we in Heaven is like... Tears in Heaven. <laughs> yes! Uh, thank you, Phoebe Bridgers, yeah. for, like, you know, uh, sharing the sentiment with so many of us that yes. hate Tears in Heaven. Though it's uh, sad that his baby died. <laughs> it is sad that his baby died. But it's like, it's just one of those songs that it's, like, so depressing. And the subject matter is so depressing. It melts suburban driving moms <laughs> the world over. But, like, for the rest of us, it's like... Why do we have to listen to this like on the way to school? Which so have on constant graving. That's the only Katie Lang song I know, I think. I also listened through this album because I was curious because I know a lot of people really like Katie Lang and I listened through it and I was like, yeah, her voice is interesting in a, a very like smoky, smooth way, which doesn't always grab me. I don't, I don't find her music that interesting, but I, I guess it's interesting that she was like one of the first sort of out lesbian pop stars. I don't think she's untalented. It's just not, music that's not for me. The thing about Kenny G is like, how did he break through to the mainstream? Yeah. Like, how does a person like Kenny G become a huge international superstar? Like, it does not add up <laughs> and, to me. <laughs> and I feel bad because like, I like instinctively now hate the sound of a soprano saxophone and it's Kenny G's fault because it's a beautiful instrument that can make cool sounds but I'm still I, we're, prejudiced. we're so used to hearing <laughs> Kenny G play it and it's just like I hate that music so much I don't know if like every market like radio market had this but it was like the smooth jazz station right and like Kenny G was like the embodiment of that who are we marketing this to uh, an acquaintance of mine once made a Venn diagram of things that are smooth and things that are jazz <laughs> 
<laughs> and Kenny G is like outside of both circles. <laughs> I mean, I would call it smooth. The music is smooth. I don't know that I would call it jazz. It's not really jazz. <laughs> jazz crossover artists. When we talk about like classical crossover artists, they're really like they're about almost as never close classical. to classical. Yeah. It's jazz crossovers. <laughs> what does the G stand for? Kenny Jenny. Kenny. <laughs> Which includes jump. They wore their pants backwards. Um, I think, Those crazy kids. I think that song is actually really fun. I think it's fun. And you know, that is a song that has had staying power. You hear it every once in a while and you're like, oh yeah. I actually did look up who produced this because I'm like, that is the hook. That's the hook of the song. And um, it's Jermaine Dupri produced it. And Daddy Mac will make ya. Jump, jump. Chris Cross will make ya. <laughs> jump, jump. <laughs> it's a really good song. Did they have another hit or was it just the one? That's the only one that I know. They probably had some other songs that got radio play because basically all one hit wonders get a couple other songs on the radio because the label is trying to push them. Yeah. But usually, if they are a one hit wonder, then no one else knows the other song. You would hear them at like the skating rink. Did you, were I, you having a roller rink situation in I, I went maybe Toledo, once. Ohio? I went maybe once. Yeah. No, yeah. when they played, you have to. And then it's like you have to not be bad enough at skating <laughs> that you're not gonna wipe out. Which includes erotic, deeper and deeper, and rain. And did it come out at the same time as the sex book? I think so. It's one of Madonna's evolutions that, like many of them, was intentionally scandalous. Oh yeah. She was at a point in her career where I think what she thought is like, people already think that I am pushing the envelope, that I'm like a bad influence for the youth or whatever. She's like, so... I'm just gonna lean into it, yeah. right? And I, I honestly respect that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Erotic and Deeper and Deeper are songs that I'm not necessarily always comfortable listening to, but they're good songs. Uh, Rain, I don't love as much. <laughs> I, I haven't spent a lot of time with this album, actually. I, I don't either. know it well. So the MTV Unplugged has Emotions, mm. Someday, that co cover of Someday that you Someday, hear. Someday, Vision yes. of Love, um, that I'll Be There, which got so yes. much radio play. I actually heard that before I heard the Jackson 5 Same. version. Yeah. Same. Uh, and it's good. I think she does a really good it's job with it. great. Yeah. Yeah. And like the, the Jackson 5 version is also incredible. Mariah Carey's an interesting person to me because she obviously was such an extraordinary singer. She had everything going for her. You know, it's kind of iconic actually that she just like makes a million dollars or a gazillion dollars a year off of royalties from All I Want For Christmas Is You. And like Which does is 93. not have to lift a finger. Yeah. We talk about her as a great singer, but she also wrote a lot of her own songs. Yes. And which includes her cover of Passionate Kisses, which is the one that you hear all the time. But not the one that you hear every, all the time if your dad is Mel Pinson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I necessarily care for Mary Chapin Carpenter. And maybe I just have a prejudice against her and her cover of Passionate hmm. Kisses. I've talked a lot about how my dad is a big music head and how he loves music, but I would say that his favorite song is Passionate Kisses, mm. the Lucinda Williams. Yeah. It's the song that you hear him singing to himself like while he's doing the dishes, like mm. all the time, to this day. And, um... <laughs> Lucinda Williams. Which does include I'm Too Sexy. This is another one-hit wonder. Like, are there other Right Said Fred hits? Like, in... Not in the Your US. Your world. <laughs> not, not in the US. They, okay. they remained fairly popular in the UK. Yeah. So I think one of the interesting things, like that song is goofy as hell, but yeah. they know that it's goofy as hell. Yeah. They are actually very established musicians. Right. The lead singer was all, is also a very good bassist. Play, oh. Who played bass for David Bowie and a couple other like huge acts. Like if David Bowie wants to play bass with, wants you to play bass for him, yeah, you're, you're a good bassist. You're doing bassist. something right. Yeah. yeah. The song I'm Too Sexy was like satire, right? Yeah. But it ended up being like an unironic hit. So I looked this up recently. The two guys who are brothers owned a gym also mm -hmm. while being musicians. And they were making fun of all these models that came into the gym and just thought they were above everybody else because they were models. And so they made this song about it. Which has Baby Got Back on it. That is a song with staying power. Oh my God, Becky. <laughs> and her butt. Yeah. Yeah, you, which just came back because you had the Nicki Minaj. Anaconda. I like the bass line it a lot. It gets all the middle-aged ants out onto the dance floor at weddings. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which has Runaway Train on it. I 
loved Runaway Train as a kid. I don't even know what I thought it meant. There's the music video that has all of these right. like actual runaway children but that like, they're trying to yeah, find. Yeah, I think like there were like weird like childhood like playground rumors about that song. But Soul Asylum is one of those bands. It's kind of like a precursor to Creed, mm -hmm. right? People point Creed toward like Pearl Jam and really I think Soul Asylum. Is, is the real... They're like, what if Eddie Vedder was the lead singer of Soul Asylum? Is yeah. what, then you get creep. Yes, exactly, yeah. Which has creep and plush. Cause it likes to heal. Man, everybody sang like that in the 90s, didn't they? Yeah. And I feel, and I feel when the dogs begin to smell her. You know, it was part of the grunge wave. More guitar-centric than yeah. Nirvana, less guitar-centric than Pearl Jam. Also which has Ain't Too Proud to Bag and Baby Baby Baby. Baby 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 got more radio play because it, you, it, it's kind of tough to t play Ain't Too Proud to Bag yeah. too much, but that song is so good. I love Ain't Too Proud to Bag. One of my favorite songs in 1992. It's such a good song. That's it for popular music albums. There isn't anything in classical music that I really resonated with, but there is a, uh, a musical, a Broadway musical that came out in 92 that I really love. But it's sort of interesting to talk about it as a musical that came out in 92. It's William Finn's musical Falsettos. Falsettos is two of the three one-act musicals that he had written before that. It's parts two and three that work together as a, as a story. Even though I tend to say that I don't really like any musical theater after the 80s, this is one exception, but this musical never got really huge because it's too weird. It's weird to put two parts of these one-acts together because they have different casts. Like, well, they have two extra person, two extra yeah. people who are only in the second act of the, of the full <laughs> musical. All right, so let's move on to the game now. Well, so we're not going to compete. We're just going to like see if we can reason through. You can ask me questions about stuff. Let's start with the Grammys and go to best rock song. So what do you think of those one best rock song? Oh, this is really interesting because I know which of these songs has historically gone down as probably everybody agrees is the best rock song of the year. And that smells like teen spirit, right? I don't feel like the Grammy voters picked that. So this is also interesting because uh, uh, this Nirvana and this Pearl Jam are from the year before, but that the right, way, right, the, way right. the Grammys no, land. Yeah. The Grammy voters are famous for getting shit wrong and for favoring the old guard. So I feel like Bruce Springsteen and Eric Clapton and Peter Gabriel are like the unlikely favorites here. I don't know that Bruce Springsteen song. I feel like it's Layla. It's Layla. Are you kidding me? It's the unplugged Layla? One best rock song over the That is so horrible. Interesting one to go to next after that. Best hard rock performance with vocal. What do you think? You know, Guns N' Roses Live and Let Die. It's clearly not the correct answer, but I feel like it could be the one that wins. I feel like Red Hot Chili Peppers because the musical difficulty of it is really interesting to me. I'm going to say Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's it? Is it really? Okay. Yeah, they got, they got a Grammy for that. Best rock performance by a duo or group with vocal. Oh, that's interesting. And Vogue is under rock performance yeah. because it had a, a guitar in yeah. it. Yeah, especially for your mind does, yeah. But um, we know how Grammy voters feel about black people. Mm. At, especially at this time. Under the Bridge is iconic. Oh, U2 is on here. What song is Achtung, baby? It's, it's the album. So it, it's weird that sometimes it's a song, sometimes it's an album. So they, it's whatever they submitted, probably? Yeah, so this whole album is up against some of these individual songs. I'm going to go with En Vogue. It's not in vogue. Oh. I can just give it, we can just do one guess with, it was U2. You know, they, the Grammy voters love U2. Yeah, and that album's not that good. <laughs> Next we've got best pop vocal performance male. Which of these do you think it is? So this is just for the vocal. It has to be Michael Jackson. It is not. Really? It's Eric Clapton. Tears in heaven. Tears in heaven? Yeah. I hate it so much. Yep. Against black or white? Yep. Against any of the others in there. <laughs> I mean, Michael Jackson, problematic, but like clearly one of the greatest pop artists ever. Yeah. Best pop vocal performance female, who do you think? Oh, it's probably Annie Lennox. We'll look through the whole list. Although Vanessa Williams. Who should it be? It should be Mariah Carey. Mm -hmm. I could see them awarding Celine Dion. I feel like it's Annie Lennox. It's not. It's Katie Lang. Oh my god! It's a lot of weird choices this year in the Grammys. It's every year in yeah, the Grammys. True, Come true. on! Um, I should just pick the worst song from each <laughs> list, and then that would be the w the winner. Well, will that work for Song of the Year? What do you think? <laughs> oh, is it Achy Breaky Heart? 
No, I bet it's Beauty and the Beast. It's not. It's yeah. Tears in Heaven. <laughs> Take a crack at I album of the year. So is Beauty and the Beast, is that the, the, the soundtrack? Disney. Yeah. No, but is it like the full movie soundtrack? Yes. Eric Clapton unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting it you now. Yeah, that song Tears in Heaven was everywhere. Record of the year. Which is the recording of the song. Yeah, so yes. it, it's for the performances and for what all of the producers are doing and recording it's, people. Um, yeah, it's an Eric Clapton sweep. I think it's, I think it's, yeah, it tears is. in heaven. It, it is. is so bad. Yep. Best selling, okay. Best this selling albums of 91. I'm gonna go right in with Nirvana Incesticide. Nope. No, mm -mm. not on the list at all. Mm -mm. Eric Clapton Unplugged. That is there. Okay, so the real test of my everybody had this album Theory? Is if everybody had the album. Gin Blossom's new miserable experience. Everybody did not have this album. Fuck! Oh, Madonna Erotica. Also not this one. Really? Mm -hmm. The controversy did not sell. Sex does not sell is what you're telling me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sex does not sell. This just in. I don't think any albums of hers did really well other than the Immaculate Collection. I was going to go to this one, but then I got distracted. Garth Brooks' The Chase. That is on there. Also, is is um, Billy Ray Cyrus on this list? Uh, Garth Brooks is yeah. number six. Put Billy Cyrus on there. I bet it's number one, isn't it? Billy Ray Cyrus is not number one. It is number seven. Get back to middle America, Molly. Come mm -hmm. on. Have a greatest hits. Yeah, that's up there. The thing about the 90s was that you didn't have streaming. If you liked a song, you bought the whole album. I'm tempted to say, right said Fred, I'm too sexy. Everybody wants to put that on at their birthday party or whatever. <laughs> and same thing with My Anaconda, right? Sir Mix-a-Lot. Don't mm -hmm. underestimate the power oh, of no. the novelty song. I, I think you're right. Okay, but actually, In Vogue. <sighs> no, okay, fuck, Molly, what are you doing? I'm picturing the Katie Lang album sitting on my Aunt Jean's boombox five CD changer yeah. thing. And it's making me think, well, the power of suburban moms. Katie Lang! No, I'm say no. No, okay. no, no Katie Lang. Oh, the Bodyguard soundtrack. That's on there. It's number one. That's number one! I will always love you, Molly. Of course, Molly! <laughs> Crisscross. No. Oh, you know what? Blind Melon. B-Girl. 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 She was on the cover of the album, too. Oh, no. uh, Michael. Celine Dion. This is a stupid game and I hate it. <laughs> You're gonna kick yourself when I start putting this up. Am I gonna kick myself? Like, are that many people buying the Mariah Carey Unplugged album? Is that what you want to guess next? I don't know. <sighs> Think about her cover of Wobbly There. Okay, fine. Put it on there. <laughs> it's on there. <laughs> Automatic for the people. That is on there. Maybe it's 10,000 Maniacs. It is not. Is it your girlfriend, Tori Amos? It's not. She never sold very well. I will shit a brick if it's Kenny G, if he's on that list. Michael. Michael. Michael! It's number five?! Okay, if you owned this album... <laughs> ever... Apologize. Apologize first, <laughs> but then, like, explain to me why you love it so much. I, I just want to hear what about this album made you want to go to Tower Records <laughs> and pay probably $10. Or Sam Goody or... Yes. What's the other mall one? And like have to get the fiddly plastic cellophane yeah. off. Unless you learned the trick to do it on the side of a table. Do you ever learn that trick? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's too late. To <laughs> Annie Lennox. It's not Annie Lennox. TLC. It's not TLC. Uh, no, I should have known that. I shouldn't have guessed TLC. But I think it's Mary J. Blige. It's not Mary J. Blige. Oh, okay, then maybe it is freaking Soul Asylum. It's not Soul Asylum. It's Sir, it's Sir mix a lot It's not Sir mix a lot <laughs> It's Right Said Fred. It's not Right Said Fred. Who on earth is it? ZZ Top's Greatest Hits. Mm -hmm. This next one's going to be the toughest one. Is it surprising? Yes. Four Non Blondes. It's not Four Non Blondes. Alice in Chains. I'm not just going down the list, I promise. <laughs> okay, it's, it's neither of those. Um, it's Mary Chapin Carpenter. No. It's not PJ Harvey. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's The Cure. Mm -hmm. My eyes keep drifting toward Neil Young, and I feel like it's not that, but is it Neil Young? That's no. Not. If you're hearing any weird noises, it's my upstairs neighbors and their creaky floor. So there's only two songs left here. I don't think either of them are good options, but I guess it's Stone Temple Pilots. It is, it's Stone Temple Pilots. They sold outsold Nirvana? Yeah. How is that possible? Don't know. It's so wild. If you owned this album and not Nirvana's <laughs> Incesticide, I would like to hear why. <laughs> Billboard Hot 100. This is for the full year. Yeah. Billy Ray Cyrus, Achy Breaky Heart. 
Number one song of the year. It was not number one. Number two song of the year. It's 15. What? Red Hot Chili Peppers, Under the Bridge. Oh, there's two Michael Jackson songs on here. Okay, put both of them up there. <laughs> Which one first? Um, Black or White. Black or White. When we first met, girl. What's number 14? That would have gotten you a strike. No way that... It's Billboard Hot 100, and there's two Michael Jackson hits, and they're not both in the top 10. Well, the other one, Remember the Time, that also would have gotten you a strike. I'm out. This is the Hot 100 for 1992. Yes. Michael Jackson had way more staying power than most of the rest those of these. Those videos. There's no way those were not both not number one. I mean, they, they were both in the top. They were both 11 to 20, which is still a lot. It's still... And they probably floated into the 10. They just didn't stay up there long yeah. enough to. Okay. So really, that's what it's about. It's about not getting into the top 10. It's about staying there for a significant portion of the year. Having the most plays for the entire year. Song of year. the Summer shit. Mariah Carey, I'll be there. What? Let's go for the lowest common denominator. Crisscross jump. This is number three. Oh, and then I'm gonna do the thing that Erica always does. Here's a song that's on here that I don't know what it is, and so you must have put it on this list for a reason, and it's John Cicada, Just Another Day. You what know, is that song? You know it. Oh, Boys to Men, End of the Road. How did I miss that? That's number one, isn't it? It is. Eric Clapton, Tears in Heaven. Number six. November Rain. 17. Oh. I'm too sexy. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. He like invented vocal fry. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vanessa Williams saved the best for last. Sometimes the sun goes round the moon. It's number four. Think about moms in minivans driving their kids to school. And Vogue. My loving. Baby got back. Number two. Um, I'm gonna go with Life is a Highway. Thanks to its frequent car commercial power. That was 18. CC Peniston, finally. Oh, 20. that's still all the way down there. Okay, yeah. color me bad. This song I don't know. Can you guess the number five? I love your smile. That song's everywhere. That's hooky. Like, that's a that's hooky a, that's a, song. That's a good hook. Yeah, let's go with that one. That's not it. Which one? Is it the hair metal band being soft? Or is it TLC? I feel like TLC, This like their early stuff didn't hit as hard as crazy sexy cool did but i think that might be our being teens in the early 2000s bias no but i also think like i've like watched like documentaries and stuff about them it was like they were doing good and then crazy sexy cool came out and then they exploded mm -hmm. but they still made it to top 20 either way right yeah i mean that's that really good mm -hmm. um, for a debut album yeah yeah i think it's tlc it is i think this is interesting though Look at this top 10. One thing that I thought was really interesting, we talk a lot in a lot of these videos about representation. Mm. And I think that like this is better than a lot yeah. of what's getting the radio play. It's actually mostly well, people of color this year. I mean, year. it is interesting. I mean, Boys to Men had that innovative New Jack swing sound. Mm -hmm. They had those incredible gospel harmonies and they were cute. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you a boy band. The teen heartthrob thing. Yep. Sir Mix-a-Lot, I mean, I feel like he's walking on the coattails of MC Hammer. Criss Cross was doing the boy band thing. You had these young, cute kids. Yeah, they were like 11 maybe? Yeah. That was the gimmick, right? Was that they were kids. I think, you know, in general, these songs are all pretty good. Yeah, Under the Bridge is a great song. Under the Bridge is incredible. It is a classic. Yeah. Like, uh, that song is going to just live for a thousand years, yeah. right? Anything else you want to say about best-selling albums or any of the Grammys? No, I mean, I found the best-selling albums very surprising. I mean, the Grammys, I expect them to be unexpected. Yeah. Right? They're going to they're gonna give the awards to the old white men most of the, the time. The Grammys, like, I mean, every year they get it so wrong. Yeah. And it's just it's just a running joke at this yeah. point. Yeah. So that's fine. I, I do want to know who bought that Kenny G album. I really, <laughs> yeah. I really want to know because, like, I don't know what the driving force behind yeah. that album is. I think Stone Temple Pilots being on there is a little surprising, oh, that's too. That's very surprising. I bet the only reason that Stone Temple Pilots did this well is because Nirvana did so well the year before, and these people were hungry for something else. So thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Please give it a pity like if you didn't like it. It won't hurt you. If you have any comments about any of these albums or songs or anything that we've talked about, please let us know below. Uh, there's a lot of the stuff that we don't know as well, and we'd love to hear if you do know these things better. Did to you buy the Kenny G album? <laughs> to this side is what, Molly? Probably another video that you will like. That's it. Up there in the corner is... is how to... How our channel... It's, it's, it's the button to the... Our... To, yeah, the button takes you to our channel. Our channel, I love this light. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> mostly talk about media. We do reviews, reminiscences, <laughs> rankings, and stuff like that. 
mostly about music and video games, but some other stuff here and there. We also have some playlists that you can check out. If you're only interested in the music content, look at our music playlist. If you're only interested in the video game content, look at our video game playlist. Thanks, everybody. Maintain your groovy selves. She beat me. <laughs>